Hey, hey. We are live at NAB 2019 BSW TV, broadcasting live in beautiful Las Vegas. I feel like I should have back sold that song or something. <laughs> it's been a while since I've been on the air, so I should have You it. You were an on air guy. Yeah, for about 15 years. I should say who you are. Oh, yeah, well. Tony Gervaisi. A lot of people know who I am. Related to Ricky Gervaisi? I, no, I, I mean, I wish. <laughs> I'm funnier. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking to Rick. And, oh, we have another. See, this uh, this uh, it threw me off because now there's two <laughs> people. I don't know what to do. What's your name? Gavin Gundler. And what do you do with the company? I am the lead software engineer on our new Ascent product. Okay, so this is this is like I feel like oh, ancient right. because you're it's still radio, you're still in college. Yes. Um, where, where are you going? Going to the University of Cincinnati for computer science. So you're you're kind of moonlighting <laughs> with the <laughs> Gates. Uh, you know, I, I will tell you, I, I thought he graduated already. I just found out <laughs> you were still going to college, and he was a smart kid. I can, I can imagine. Yeah. Yeah. To work for a company like Gates. Yeah, now now I, now I feel a little bit in, inadequate. No, no, no. Please, <laughs> so. please. No. You know his background, yes? I do. He's been telling me. He's a... Uh, oh, hey! <laughs> I, I would say... Have been telling you how good I am? Thanks. I've been asking. I would say you're a renaissance man. Me? Yeah, definitely. Um, that's interesting. And don't okay. be humble about it. No, that sounds interesting. I mean, I, I guess I could understand how that is, yeah. Like, I mean, so what's up with the restaurant, for um, example? You know, we were very fortunate to have a very successful restaurant in the family. We, uh, uh, Catello's, we, it was voted top 100 in the United States. We won many awards uh, for, you know, best food, uh, best atmosphere. We cured our own meats. We made our own cheeses. We, you know, did uh, six different pastas by hand. Uh, uh, fresh every day. I mean, we, we, we had a, we had a, you know, it was the dream story. It felt like Bill Murray and Caddy show. You know? <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and we, and unfortunately, you know, circumstances with, uh, with family and, and other things, I, I had to get rid of the restaurant. Oh. Yeah. So um, that, that, you know, that was when I thought I was out of the radio business. Yeah. And because, uh, I mean, you know, I was with Nassau Broadcasting for 20 years uh, as VP of Engineering for Nassau. So I thought, you know, radio has uh, treated me well. Now it's time to do the food stuff. I see. And we did a great job. I loved it. My kids worked for me, and oh, I had man. some great employees. And uh, and now, ironically, my oldest has a place, and he's uh, you know he's a chef. And my uh, my daughter, who's in the middle, is a bar manager of an, a great restaurant in New Jersey. Uh, that's a that's a, a farm to fork type restaurant. And, uh, it's in the blood, isn't it? It is. I mean, really. But, you know, as a broadcast engineer, and I say they, 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 they kind of marry each other because, you know, when you design a studio, you design a facility, and you're done, and you hand it off to the jocks and all that, you have this sense of accomplishment and this pride, and, and it's just amazing what you've done. And then every night at a restaurant service, it's the same thing because you have a couple hundred people in, they eat, they love it, and uh, you know, things do go wrong. There are flights, but the most part, when you have a successful place, and you get done at the end of the night, you have that same sense of accomplishment. So I love both industries yeah. to death. Yeah. Um, you know, and, it, and they both industries have been treated me extremely well. Were you a jock? Me? Yeah. 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 Uh, I started off uh, working for uh, WKXW in Trent, New Jersey at the age of 13. Uh, what? <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah, see? Wow. <laughs> Um, Take that, smart kid. <laughs> Code this. No, uh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, uh, Mike Landry, who was the program director at the time, I used to come in and uh, hang with him, and he gave me a chance to work like Sunday night overnight. And he says, you know, I don't want you to talk. I just wanted you to play records because back then her, we were playing records, playing 45s, and so much fun. Yeah, and then. Um, I, I st and stayed there and, you know, I was going to go to college for hospitality and I ended up um, moving to South Carolina doing on-air stuff there at uh, Z96 and 104.7 WNOK and I've done just about every shift and, and so I was on air for, I guess, about 10 or 12 years and then when I moved to Long Island, I worked for uh, WALK, great station, Walkie Bear, um, and uh, worked for Allen Beck and Art Kern and I was their chief engineer. And then went to, Jeez. well, even at NOK, doing on-air work, I was also their chief engineer. Um, I took over for, uh, and here I have it here, Barry Thomas, who, uh, uh, who was the chief, and he left, and I took over for him. And it was, you know, I, I wouldn't change anything. And then yeah. I, I joined Nassau Broadcasting when we had just two radio stations, 
uh, WPST and WHWH in Trenton. And uh, notice I didn't say Trenton, uh, Trenton. <laughs> um, and then we went from two to 100 in like a year. And stayed there for, you know, until we sold the company. It was like, you know, 18 and a half years. Goodness. So. Somebody just uh, briefly told me about, and I, if I'm screwing this up, I'm sorry, but were you one of the original uh, people that developed the Amber Alert system? So I was on the, um, uh, yeah, wow, how'd you hear that? So uh, I, I was on I the, got a <laughs> notice on my phone. I was on the- Your picture <laughs> pops up. That was great. <laughs> Sorry. I was on the NJBA, the New Jersey Border, uh, uh, New Jersey Broadcasters Association, or, or Broadwatchers Association, and uh, I was the engineering rep, and unfortunately we had you know, the situation with Amber, who actually was in my hometown of Hamilton Township, New Jersey. Okay. And uh, so when the situation came apart where they wanted to do these Amber Alerts, and it was passing through this New Jersey State Senate, uh, they kind of got me to design the best practices plan for the Amber Alert for interfacing with uh, broadcasters, radio, television, as well as this New Jersey State Police Emergency Management Act. And what's unique about New Jersey, anybody knows about, is you know, you're you're uh, uh, depending on where you are in the state, you can be into three states in a matter of 15 minutes. Right. So it's easy when you're talking about a big state like Texas to initiate an Amber, Amber Alert in three counties, but when you're talking about New Jersey and something happens in Ewing, New Jersey and they could be in Philadelphia or New York or Delaware in a matter of 30 minutes, and you have to have those broadcasters work with you. It's a lot more difficult. So we wrote, I wrote the plan for that, and uh, uh, that was given out, and they accepted the plan for the Amber Alert. So yeah, it was the, the start of that in New Jersey. And now nationwide. I mean, now nationwide. Yeah, incredible. now it's turned into you know you have the Amber Alert, the Silver Alert, I think it is, for senior citizens yeah. or, or dementia. You have... Yes. I think the Adam alert is also something, but that's, I don't know if that's... It's the thing. Adam Lambert alert. <laughs> no, Look, Queen is nearby, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's incredible. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's, so, yeah. uh, you, you've left a legacy already. Uh, well, <laughs> I mean, seriously, man, that's, like I said, that's it's, big stuff. The industry has been extremely well to me. I, I yeah. uh, you know, I love what I do. I love working, you know, Gatesier, I joined Gatesier a year ago this year. Um, to uh, uh, to run uh, to basically be the business manager for the Interplex broadcast division, and not only have I used Interplex for you know since 1996. Yeah, I know it's one of those things that you just right like, like OC white boobs. Right, exactly. You've Brown seen them forever. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, and then I still do contract engineering work, and I have three stations in Miami that I run, and and uh, I'm an end user. So it was an easy fit for me to to jump from you know being a contract engineer and working as you know sales of box goods to you know representing Interplex, and be able to work with Kayer, who's absolutely fantastic. He's the, the president of our division, a VP of, the, of, of of Interplex, and does a phenomenal job. His vision is great and Steve Paulson who runs the uh, uh, I guess that fire life safety and the military side of it because Interplex is more than just for broadcasters it's it's a box that's used by just about three letter every three letter agency in the United States yeah. and, you know, and the US government um, it's used worldwide it supplies you know, every military branch has it it's it's a it's the security in it and the options that are in it may be overkill for some broadcasters but they're there for a reason and uh, so, you know, it's a, it's a great product. Um, I'm, I love what I do and I love doing it for Interplex. And then of course, you know, when I go to Mason and I see Gavin, what he's working on and I see this new Ascent product, it just blows me away. Yeah, so could you guys, and I'm just gonna let you geek out on this because you know much more about Ascent than I could ever, so. Well, I what guess, is Ascent exactly? So, you know, our IPL products are, are uh, a way that we can move audio from point A to point B through uh, public switch networks, uh, the internet, uh, whether you're using 4G or you know, you're using LTE cards or your cable modem or if you have an MPLS or even across our 950 systems, our 950 microwave systems, which are uh, IP based. Uh, and uh, you know, they're robust, three network jacks on all of them. You can multiple audio channels pass AES-192, AES-67, AES-3, left and right audio. And, but you know, we have a one channel unit and a two channel unit and a composite unit. And we wanted to scale up, and they decided to look at this product called Ascent, or to develop this product called Ascent, which is scalable up to 32 channels of AS67, AS3, left and right, 
and uh, it's completely compatible. It complements our IPL products. It uses the same technology, RTP over UDP, to talk to the IPL. So there, you can have an ascent in your studio to the master control area, and then communicate to the uh, IPLs. But then there's a new tech, new uh, streaming uh, code called SRT, and Gavin is part of that. And um, it's what is what is SRT, Gavin? So SRT is Secure Reliable Transport, and that is a new algorithm that's actually developed mainly for video use, and we're one of the first people to apply it to audio. Um, and what's great about it is it's a UDP protocol that does retransmissions, like TCP, but it doesn't have the congestion issues that TCP has. Mm. And it also has encryption, so it's incredibly secure. Um, and yeah, it's extremely robust. It can you know, handle really horrible networks up to 20% packet loss. It can, it can uh, provide a hitless stream. Great. So, are you learning from him? Uh, with SRT, absolutely. Yeah, um, isn't that cool? <laughs> it, it, no, I mean, yes, it is very cool. Going to put because, us out of work. Uh, you know, as as someone who's you know come up with the you know, you know I remember the first computer we installed. It had two five and a quarter inch floppy drives. You know, and you yeah, go, man. You've never <laughs> seen any of those. No, I, I have. Uh, back in the museum. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> they kind of worked. Yeah, they kind of worked. You know, <laughs> uh, and your your green WYSIWYG color screen and. Uh, so learning this new SRT and, and the, the capabilities of it, you know, UDP, when we all thought of it, you know, it's, it's basically me sitting on top of a table shouting out and whoever hears it, hears it. And it's, it's really good for that type of conversation and TCP is where I'm always going to ask for it back. But now you have SRT, which runs on the UDP level, but it allows for retransmission. It just makes it that much more robust. Like you said, it was really designed for video. And the guys who, who developed the, the, the SRT protocol actually just won a, an Academy Award yesterday. Um, and I got to hold it and stroke oh, it. Oh, wow. And, uh, cool. Uh, it's heavy. Uh, and uh, <laughs> they, they won an award for the protocol. And we're the only uh, a Kodak company using it for audio. Uh, everybody else ah, is, it's, it. it's really so robust for, for video that, you know, what we're doing for audio is just you know this big compared to what it, it can really do, but it is that much more better for what we do. And you know, Gavin can tell you with redundancy reasons, security reasons, uh, retransmission, the FEC. It's just it's a neat it's a neat protocol that will just give you that much more of reliable of a transmission. Okay, it kind of makes sense to me now. I, I understand where you're going. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and that's an accomplishment. So what else can we see at your booth here at NAB 2019? What else are you showing? Well, so we do have all the IPL products, the IPL 100P, which is, or the 100 MPX, which is our composite box, uh, which allows transmission of your baseband or your composite from your studio to your transmitter site. And that allows you to keep your high-end $15,000 audio processor at your studio so it doesn't get blown up by lightning strikes and all that good stuff. Uh, and with that, we can encapsulate using our technology called IP Connect. We can move E2X data or uh, um, the uh, uh, exporter to Exciter within our audio and it stays secure because it gets tunneled within our, our little interplex tunnel that we create. So the audio stays timed with the HD data mm. and you can plug it into your fax Exciter and uh, um, uh, into your audio in. So you get the bang for the buck of your high-end audio processor and you get the transport. And that, where that's really handy is if you're doing SFN networks, which is becoming very popular now, single frequency networks where you know all on the same channel and you have to be synchronized so they don't interfere. Uh, also, mm. it's very handy for if you have a, a translator, but you want them to be synchronized and you want the sound, the station to sound the same. If you think about it, if you're uh, uh, you got two or three translators and you're out buying five or six thousand dollar processors for each translator, right. it becomes very expensive. But if I could do one or two processors at the studio as a main and a backup, and I could send it to 10 different translators and they all sound the same, and they all have RDS data. That just makes it a better opportunity for the owner to do what he wants to do and, and make his station successful. Um, and the other box is, uh, uh, of course, the Ascent, that he's done a great job in showing how we're transporting AS67 and moving it, and moving it interoperable between whether you're a, a Livewire or a Wheatnet or Dante or Ravenna or yeah. Yeah, anything that can support the AS67 protocol. So that's, uh, come by and see that. That's, a, that's, I love what I do and I'm looking at his box and I'm jealous because yeah. I can't wait to sell that. That's going to be out in October. Um, price point is, I will tell you that it's because it's scalable, it's, we're the, the 
cost efficiency is happening around the eight channel mark. So if you're gonna do just you know sub eight channels, you're gonna do the IPL 200, which are the two channels, you can buy a couple of those. But once you go above that, if you know you're gonna to wanna to scale into it, that's where the ascent complements and becomes more affordable. Well, uh, number one, I'm impressed with your young brain. <laughs> yeah. I mean, congratulations, man. I bet your parents are just super, <laughs> super proud. Oh yeah. And you're you're a legend. No, uh, no. Yeah. So infamous uh, or <laughs> whatever you <laughs> whatever you want. Gates there and uh, Tony and uh, Gavin. Thank you so much for joining us here and uh, sharing all the information that I didn't understand. But <laughs> any engineer that's listening right now is going, yeah, that's cool stuff. Well, I can say you can always give uh, your local uh, RSN manager, your regional sales manager for Gates Air a call. If you have any questions, of course, BSW can call, ask for any price quotes. They'll work with me closely and we can design a system up for you guys. And I appreciate you taking the time oh, and man. allowing yeah. us to come in. I learned a lot. And share our wares. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Thank guys. you for having us. Have a good time with the rest of the show. Thank you. Thanks, man. Do I need to do an outro? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> Why not? I can't hear the song, but uh, broadcasting live from NAB 2019, this is Tony Carr. <laughs> Feels pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, it's been a while. <laughs> we'll be back. <laughs>